Yep. Black Girl Stock's official merch is now live, so you can either scroll down and click underneath this video, or you can go over to teesprings.com. We have t-shirts, different colors, different sizes, crew necks, sweatshirts, and I got the MACD tee specifically for my fellas. What's up, fellas? Go ahead, get the socks, make an outfit out of it. Get rich, stay rich, everything positive. You already know how we do. So go ahead, check out Black Girl Stock's official merch. This video is going to be long. Please use the timestamps and watch the ads. Fox Tail from the D. Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Fox Tail Digital coming to you again with Black Girl Stocks. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about options again, but this video is going to be special. I wanna talk about how you can pick the best options. So you know that there's usually a long list of hundreds of options for you to choose from. This video is going to help you along the way to choosing the right one or the best one to give you the most profit uh, with the least amount of loss. But first, if this is your first time watching this video, please make sure that you click that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel, spreads the love, and brings more people and good energy, hopefully, into the channel. Also, if you're not already, please make sure that you subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get notified anytime I upload a new video for you guys. Also, uh, if you guys weren't aware, the channel is um, able to sell merch, so I made all of this myself. It's very special to me, so if you guys are interested in rocking some of the <laughs> the first uh, Black Girl Stocks merch collection, you can go below. They don't show the full shelf down here, so I need to hit up YouTube and see what we can do about that, but there are more designs than what I believe you're seeing down here. If not, then just pick and choose what you want. Uh, if you like these designs, get them now before they are no longer available. Let's go ahead and let's get into the video. So the question is, how do you choose the most profitable options and grow your account quickly? So if you're starting with a small account, which is what we're doing on this channel, you know, you're gonna wanna know how can you start with options and build up that account quickly because you do stand to gain a larger margin of return with trading options for a lower price versus just buying the outright stock. So we've already talked about that in our options one-on-one -on -one video. So if you haven't already checked that out, I'll leave that in the description below or it'll pop up somewhere above me. Picking the right option contract from the get-go, okay? <laughs> you know, this can save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars by knowing this information. I'm gonna talk about a few different things. So first, we're gonna talk about how you feel about the stock in general. You know, you always want to begin with the end in mind. Know what strategy that you have, what outcomes do you see for this stock? What are you hoping, not betting on, but hoping for? You know, what strategy are we using? Then we're gonna go into picking the correct expiration date. So expiration date, that is something that is going to be critical with your options. And lastly, we're gonna talk about picking the right strike price. So all of these things are going to help you gauge in which option contract are we gonna pick out of this list of hundreds that we see. The app that I'm going to use in this video, I'm gonna use Weeble. A lot of people are asking for more Weeble tutorials, so I'll do that for you guys. So the first and probably the easiest step is picking out your option trading strategy. So what strategy do you have for this stock? So the first thing that you're going to want to know in determining this option trade is your overall outlook or plan for this option contract. So this plan should list out what your goals are and what you hope to gain from this option. And so this is gonna help you pick trades that have better returns. And so you really just wanna ask yourself a few simple questions. Do you think that the stock is going to increase increase or decrease. So what's what's going to happen with the stock? And one way that you can, you know, gauge this is what is your current trend? So we always talk about trend. Think trend. Trend. What's the trend? So as far as the trend, uh, we're going to be using Weeble. So let's just pick a random stock. I'm going for NIO and I'm going to go on a month chart. Oof, God. Okay. So what I like about Weeble is it'll actually kind of give you a quick 
view of what trend you're in. So, you know, with this green, uh, you know, it's showing you green. So obviously it's in an uptrend right now uh, versus if we look right here, it's still kind of in an uptrend, but in this area, more so to the right, it is kind of dropping. So it's down. This is down. okay. Yeah, this is better. Um, and you see right here, this is clearly a downtrend. So I really like Weeble because it helps you with your trend. And you know, this again is going to help you in your option trade. So what do you expect for the stock to do to go up? Um, meaning bullish. Are you bullish on the trade or do you think the stock is going to go down? bearish so what trend are we in indicators you know we talk about it every video yada 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 okay and also you know what are your risks what are you willing to lose on this option trade so you stand to gain a lot with options and you could possibly lose a lot you know on the opposite of that if the trade doesn't go in your favor 100 percent. so you know you have to know how much are you willing to lose um you know with this trade and so uh we'll get into a little bit we'll get into that a little bit more as we go further into the video but this is just kind of you know bare minimum basics and then lastly do you want premium income and when i say premium income are you wanting to just receive premiums um or are you wanting to actually buy contracts and you know gain profit from you know that stock going in your favor so when i say collecting premiums for income that would imply selling options or doing advanced options strategies like credit spreads and things like that we briefly talk about doing credit spreads using Tiblio uh, that's a company that offers credit and debit spreads they send you a new list every single morning with dozens of uh, different strategies that you can just go through pick check the stock price see what it's doing and it'll help you along your trade so if you're just starting out credit spreads I would suggest using Tiblio and if you do use Tiblio if you use my link down below uh, you will get a discount on your first month so make sure you check that out if you're interested interested in using Tiblio and starting uh, doing credit spreads. So, uh, but I just wanted to, ah, all right. All right, everybody. You know, I was going back and I was editing this video and I realized I didn't even say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's to any of you guys. I apologize about that. I hope everybody is enjoying their holidays. But since we're talking about Tiblio, I wanted to remind you guys that we are doing our $100 Tiblio giveaway. So for those of you that have signed up to Tiblio and you signed up using my link, I know there's over 160 of you guys. So um, if you've done that, all I need for you to do is log into your Tiblio account, go to your homepage, take a screenshot of your profits, your earnings, and just send that to me. So you can DM it to me, you can email it to me. I will be given a $100 giveaway for that. So if you're using Tiblio, just send a picture of how much you made with it, and hey, you can get $100. So whoever has the most profits from using Tiblio, you will be getting that $100. So we're probably gonna do it on live stream, live chat, I'll hit you up, get the cash app or whatever, whatever. Um, But yeah, so I just wanted to extend that invitation to everybody, come and get this free money, and happy holidays. Let's get back to the video. All right, drop that <laughs> it, it, sprinkle in there. You know how I do. But yeah, so um, that's what I wanted to talk about. Just basically getting your strategy together. What do you think that this stock is going to do? And so you want to have that planned out. How much do you, you know, plan on losing? And then when, when you're doing options, a lot of times you're going to know, you know, your maximum uh, loss if you're not outright just selling naked calls or puts and things like that. So you're going to know your maximum loss, uh, which is normally going to be the premium that you pay paid so you know you have to gauge what are you willing to lose because that's going to you know that's going to help you pick an option that's going to be better suited for you and your profit loss margin okay kind of ran my mouth with that one the next thing that we're going to get into is picking the right expiration date Okay, so the expiration date is basically the specific date and time that an option contract is going to expire. An option buyer is going to pick their expiration date primarily on two different things, or this is what you want to base that on. The cost of the contract or the premium and the length of the contract. So you can use volatility, Use your option Greeks, uh, probability calculators, and that, that, I mean, that goes into Greeks too. But unlike just buying a regular stock, when you buy a stock, you can hold that stock basically forever and as long as it's available and, and publicly traded. But when you buy an option contract, it has a time limit. So there's an expiration on that time frame that you're able to uh, either exercise or gain profit with this contract. So the further out the expiration date is, the more time you have for the 
option contract to be profitable. So you have more time for it to go in your favor and you know gain more money for you. So that's always good. So an expiration date that's further out is normally always going to be favorable, but it usually costs more money. And so with that, you're going to have to be able to pick a good balance for you, a balance in between the time of the uh, contract expiring and the price. And so that's what's going to go into picking that expiration date for you. Okay, so we're still looking on NIO stock and I really just wanna get into a couple of things. I wanna briefly discuss how important implied volatility is to picking your option expiration date and also your Greeks. I'm on NIO, we're in Weeble, and let's go ahead and let's look at some option uh, options for this. So we click on it, you see you have a list, uh, we have different option expiration dates. So that, well, yeah, all the way up until the, dang, this is a couple of years, all the way till the 20th of January, 2023, $14 per share. And you, ha you know, it's over a hundred shares, so. Whew. It can get it can get expensive um uh, let's go ahead and let's get into volatility and so volatility is going to be really important for you with picking your option contracts and that's going to be both with your strategy and the expiration date both and the reason why is because volatility is essentially going to tell you how expensive or cheap an option contract is in respect to the expiration date obviously the higher the implied volatility the more expensive the option contract is going to be clicking here I'm gonna click on one that's 11 days away right here on the far left these are your strike prices uh, next to that I have the last price of this option so I wanna okay so here's the actual stock price so the stock price for NIO is currently trading at $44 per share and uh, we have some different strike prices over here and one thing I want to show you guys with Weeble if you guys are new with trading options on Weeble and you're looking at it in this format I noticed that the strike prices were in ascending order and it kind of flipped me around because it, it made me feel like I was looking at puts for the calls and it, it was just backwards from the way Robinhood is. So if you want to um, switch that around, all you have to do is just click up here to the setting. When it says sort by strike price, you can either click ascending or descending. So I like descending. It just helps me and also, you know, if you wanna see different things for your, I didn't want this to be a Weevil tutorial, but it's just brief. If you wanna see different things like implied volatility, delta, or if you wanna see volume, whatever, whatever, you still come to that settings and you can pick and choose what you want. So these ones that have the cross through, that means they're not visible, and the ones with the eyes are visible as you see um, up here at the top, my top uh, column, <laughs> whatever. I digress, so you see your implied volatility right here, and um, let's just give let's just give a brief example. Oh, and one rule of thumb, yeah, the higher your implied volatility, the more profitable that option is going to be. So let's say if you bought a contract and it had a low, it had a low implied volatility, if that implied volatility increases, then your profit is going to increase because that option is more valuable. So that's one strategy that you can do looking, uh, we're gonna go over a few different strategies towards the end of this video, but that's one thing that you can do, look for low um, volatilities is around earning report time. So companies are going to announce their earning reports. Let me see if I can uh, click on this chart. Okay, so you see right here, this, this E right here, that means that they had an earning report so that that just means that the company uh, reports its earnings and normally right before earning reports the implied volatility for options goes up and then after that it drops so that's another way that you can um, you know utilize options if you want or you can look for stocks that offer options that have upcoming earnings and you can jump in there a little bit earlier before the earnings wait for that implied volatility to increase and then jump out maybe a day before the day of whatever. So that's another strategy uh, that I read about. Could be could be profitable for you, something to try. Okay, so first let me pause that and let me just give you one quick example. Let's say that you had three different options that each have the same strike price of 50. They're all calls, but they have different expiration dates. So you have a March, April, and a May, and they each have a different implied volatility. So the March is gonna have a 20 uh, implied volatility, April is gonna be 40 and May is gonna be the 90. That's gonna be the highest. And then you also look over to the left, or excuse me, look over to the right and you can see the price differences per share. So this is gonna be like your premium. So you see the March is the cheapest and May is really expensive. So it's gonna be, you know, um, about 
100, over $150. But we have this stock scheduled for our earnings report in May. So that's probably why it's higher. If you feel like this stock is going to be profitable and have a good earnings report, it may be better for you to invest in that further out expiration date because the stock is going to um, go up and the option is going to increase in value. So you're going to make more money off of that, but you're going to invest more. So that's why looking at things like implied volatility are going to help you gauge which option is going to be best for you. All right, let's get back to the video. So last thing I'll say about implied volatility, like I said in the beginning, it's going to tell you how cheap or expensive an option contract is. If you have a stock that has high implied volatility, you see it's over hundred percent, then that basically means that it's going to have a higher premium. All right. So that's it for implied volatility. The next thing that we're going to talk about as far as picking your expiration dates is going to be the Greeks. And we talked about the option Greeks that basically just tells you, um, what is giving this option contract value? What's making it gain? and lose value. It's not simply the stock price. So just because the stock price is going up, this option contract could still be losing value. And there's a few, um, there's a few different Greeks, but the two that we're going to talk about are Delta and Theta. And these are going to really help you gauge in picking the right expiration date for your strategy. The first one I'm going to talk about is Delta. Long story short, Delta basically tells you how much more value that option contract is going to gain each dollar that the stock price goes up. So just looking here, let's look here. So stock price is at 44 and let's say we're looking at a strike price of 46. This has a Delta. It's low. This has a Delta of 0.34. We can, we don't have to look at gamma, but I mean, we could, we don't. So that means that every dollar, cause you're thinking that, you know, the stock price is going to go up a dollar. So every dollar, that means I'm getting a hundred dollars. No, not necessarily. These Greeks come into play. So every dollar that that stock goes up, you're only getting, you know, 0.34 extra on that, that premium uh, value. So it's not a full 100, it's 34. So, you know, that's, that's something to keep in mind um, with your Delta. Also for this Delta, if you have a Delta of point, what is this 0.34? That means that you have a 34% probability that that option is going to expire in the money. That's not good. I don't know if you are into probabilities, but I need something at least over 60% for me to be all in or at least semi in. So paying attention to Delta is really going to help you gauge it. If it has a low Delta, you know, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for you. So if you're, if you're buying it now, if you're doing credit spreads, um, and you're, you know, you're on the opposite end of that, then, then that's going to be another story entirely. So yeah, make sure that you are looking at your Delta. And I talked, like I said, I talked more about that, um, in the Greeks video, but generally the greater the probability that the option is going to be profitable or in the money on expiration date, then that option contract is going to probably be more expensive too. It has a more prop. It has a higher probability of success. So yeah, it's probably going to cost more, but you stand to gain more profit from it also and not lose your money. So that's something to keep in mind. And on the opposite, the lower, that the probability is or the lower your Delta, then that means normally it's going to be less expensive. So let's look here. You see this 0.2 Delta 34 cents per share. Let's look at some higher deltas. Yeah. The higher Delta 0.7, that's 2.21 per share, but it has higher probability. Yeah. It, it's going up. So probability of that being in the money. Yeah, definitely. Cause the stock is already 44. So probability of it being above 39, if it, if it continues, what it's doing is high. The next, the next Greek that I'm going to talk about is theta and theta is something that I wish I knew about when I started trading stocks. Actually all the Greeks, I really wish I knew about the Greeks when I started doing options. So theta is basically how much money you're losing every day that you hold on to that option contract. So if you're looking at this list here and you see a theta of, okay, I'm just, I'm looking for a high one. Okay. So if I see a theta of 0.17, that means that every single day I'm holding this contract, I'm losing $17. That's crazy. So imagine if you had a point, five, or if you have 1.5, that means every day you're losing $150 on that option contract. No. 
So definitely looking at Theta, uh, that's gonna help you gauge in picking the right contract for you. You want a lower Theta. If you're buying an option contract, if you're buying it, you want your Theta to be low. Now on the opposite side, if you're selling it and you do want this option to expire, worthless, like if you're doing spreads or if you're selling it, then that's different. You're gonna want a high theta because that means that person is losing more and more value each day. And I mean, it's just wonderful for you if you're playing the opposite end. But if you're not, then you want low, 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 low theta because that's just money you're losing for nothing regardless. Nobody's trying to lose 50 and $100 just to hold a contract that, no, that you already paid a premium on? No, that's crazy. So yeah, we talked about those. So that's gonna help you pick your expiration date. And also another thing that's gonna help you uh, pick expiration is of course your ind indicators. So, you know, using things like RSI, um, overbought, oversold, you know, using support and resistance, looking at a stock's previous patterns. And if it does have certain support, uh, meaning a point that it's not gonna go below and resistance levels, then you can help that gauge you in, you know, picking your expiration date because you know that it's gonna take this amount of time for this stock to either rise or fall. Um, yeah, using support and resistance. Also, whatever time frame you feel like this stock is going to reach, or yeah, whatever time you think it's going to reach that strike price, the rule of thumb is to multiply that by a variable of three to five. And by doing that, once again, you give yourself more time to beat time decay or that theta, and you give more time for the option one to gain more value and um, looking at delta, theta, make sure you're looking at that. That's gonna help you pick a great expiration date for you. For, so remember, further out is the best, but you also you know, have to think about your budget and what you're willing to spend and lose on a trade. So all of that, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of research, but once you get it, you got it. All right, and the next one is the strike price. So how do you pick the right strike price? Okay, and so what I mean with strike price is strike price is basically the value that you're wanting that stock to be by or before the expiration date. So we want this stock to reach that strike price. So what value do you see that stock reaching in the trend that you picked from the beginning. So the first step where we picked what direction we're going in is going up or down. Okay. Well, how far up do you think it's going to go? And when, you know, yeah. So by a certain date, what's the strike price? So the strike price is going to have a big influence on the result of your option trade. So somebody that's a new investor or less risky, they're normally going to pick a strike price that's either in the money or at the money. And so we're still in Weeble right here. And so, yeah, you see right here, it says the stock price is at currently at $44.06. So NIO is at $44 right now. So all of these strike prices, the strike price is all the way on the far left. All of these prices, this 44, 43.5, 43, you see how those are below? That means that those are in the money. So we're already in the money on those. They're already profitable because the stock is already above that. So less risky traders are gonna pick those because it's already profitable. More risky traders are gonna pick these that are above it and those are considered out of the money. Oh, I forgot at the money. At the money is the same price that the stock is. So at the money would be the $44. It is trading at 44 right now. So that's at the money and everything that's out of the money it's all of these up here, up to $70, $80, way out of the money. So those are for more risky investors. I'm not trying to be risky right now, not too risky. So normally I pick in the money options. Those are, you know, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with my profits and I don't have any complaints. Oh, and um, this is going to be for calls. Now on the opposite, let's switch it down here. Let's go to puts, you know, a, less so this is betting on the stock going down so a less risky trader is going to um for puts they're going to pick one that is actually above the stock the strike price that's going to be in the money because the stock has already you know surpassed that so you know like i said we're betting on the stock dropping so those <laughs> that's up here uh, all these up here this is considered in the money and we want it to continue dropping lower so all of these uh, lower prices are out of the money. So 
just think about it like that it's kind of a little flip-flop but yeah picking the wrong strike price could mean a lot of loss for you and your loss is going to increase the further out of the money your strike price is so if you are wrong with the strike price the further out it is that's just more money that you're going to be losing but versus you picking in the money like that stock has already reached that so you're not going to be losing as much so that's why it's less risky um, but like i said you're going to you're going to be possibly getting less profit so it's just you have to you have to pick and choose your risk tolerance uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit okay so let's try and let's set this up let's say that you pick the stock we're just going to keep using nil but let's say that you pick the stock that you do want to do an option trade on um for this i mean i say currently it's in a downtrend oh this is for the option hold on no currently it's in an uptrend so i would i would bet on it continuing to go up so like I said, the next thing you're going to do is pick whether or not you're going to do a call or a put. So what are you betting on the stock going up or down for this one? Oops, battery for this one. I would pick the call because I'm betting on the stock continuing to go up. So the two key things in determining your strike price are going to be your risk tolerance and your desire risk to reward payoff. So how much are you willing to gain and possibly lose this amount? And so risk tolerance, um, you know, that's really going to go into your Delta. So let's, let's look back at that again. And so, like I said, uh, different strike prices, they're going to have different deltas and, uh, Delta is essentially how much you're going to gain or lose with that stock price movement. So if you have higher Delta, that means that you're going to gain more or lose more. So you might, you know, depending on your risk tolerance, you might want one maybe that has a semi neutral Delta that's going to help you gauge your strike price. So let's say, for example, that for this one, we want to do, like I said, the call option. So your risk tolerance is going to determine whether or not you're going to buy in the money, out of the money or at the money. So there's different risks on all of those. So just on this, all this list that we see right here, um, all of this, let's go back to call all of this out of the money. It has risk all of this, this one right here at the money, it has risk. And then all of these in the money, they have their own risk. And so I want you guys to think about this. Just keep this in the back of your head and in the money strike price is very sensitive. So for this one, this is a call, all of these underneath the strike price, these in the money ones, they're very sensitive. They have high Delta. So if the stock price increases by a dollar, then you're essentially going to get $70 for this point point seven one. It's actually going to be more than that. It depends on the, the gamma and everything else. But if in, in a, in, in a scenario, if everything else was frozen, then you would get $70 every dollar that that underlying stock move in your favor. If the stock price increases, then an in the money option is going to gain more than an at the money or an out of the money contract because it has a higher Delta. Okay. But on the opposite, it can also lose you more. So you're going to gain more money with that higher Delta. So pay attention to the Delta in the money options also have more value. So you see these in the money, the further in the money you go, the implied volatility, um, it just continues to increase. So the further in the money you go, the more valuable um, that option contract is. So it's actually less risky because it's more valuable. Out of the money calls have the most risk. So these out here above the stock price, those have the most risk. Out of the money options have more risk, um, especially when they're closer to expiration date. So the closer to expiration you are, the more risk, the more risky the option is. And also the closer it is, you know, it could expire worthless. And so, you know, normally the closer you get to expiration date, your Delta is going to be smaller. So let's look two. So our, yeah, our Delta is very small on this. So right now, uh, this is us talking about the risk, risk to reward payoff. So 
Briefly, just talking about that, your desired risk to reward payoff is basically the amount of money or capital that you would risk on this option trade and then your projected profit target. So how much do you expect to gain from this? Just looking at this, an in the money call might possibly, an in the money call might be less risky than an out of the money call. So these down here might be a little bit less risky than out of the money um, calls, but you know, they also cost more. So looking over here, looking at the price, you know, this is two, $2 plus per share. And that's for a hundred shares versus these out of the money, they're cheaper. So that's another thing you have to, you know, you have to gauge your risk versus how much you stand to profit. So that's all going to completely be on you. Um, but yeah, that's also going to help you pick the right one for you. So what do you want to gain versus how much could you possibly lose? And like I said, the only thing you stand to lose, like from buying, buying call options is the premium. So you see this, uh, let's just look at this one right here. This 0.53, we have $53 versus these out here. You know, this is going to be a couple hundred. So uh, how much do you want to pay versus how much do you want to gain? Because you see these down here. Yeah, they cost more, but they have higher deltas, which aren't even really that high for the price. That's probably because it's two days away. I mean, they're too high. I mean, the deltas, yeah, you're not gaining that much for that price. But you see down here, these is further out. It's a little bit like 17 days away. Uh, oof. It's still, yeah, it's, it's more expensive. Oh, it's all expensive y'all, <laughs> but you know, yeah, you have to go through that and pick and choose which one is going to be better for, uh, for what you have going. Always pick one that has a good Delta though. It's a good probability of it's going up. And you also want to pick a stock that's already in that trend that you're betting on further out expiration dates. You really, you know, you really can't beat it. You just have to be consistent and you have to be patient. An out of the money call is going to have a larger gain than in the money because first of all, you're paying less for it or what you're going to have larger gains because you paid less for it, but it's still more risky and the probability of it um, being worth something um, at, at, at expiration is going to decrease the further out you go. So, you know, it's another thing to keep in mind. All right. So then right here, I'm just kind of looking at a couple of different, um, diagrams that I found on investopia. And so I'm just looking at it right here and you see right here, you have all these different strike prices. Um, the GE stock is currently trading at $27 and 20 cents. And we are banking bullish. We're banking bullish on this. It's going to con going to continue increasing. So you have these different strike prices right here and let's say it in a month or so away. So, uh, the stock is at 27. So if you pick 27, it's a little bit cheaper, but the further out of the money you go, the cheaper it is, the less valuable it is though. You see the implied volatility is dropping. Also the less money that you're going to be gaining, um, any amount that the underlying stock gains. So this, you see down here at $30 at the stock, increased by a dollar. I mean, you'd only get $9 off that. That's absolutely trash, but you only paid $8 for the trade. So, you know, that kind of goes into consideration too. So this is just a little diagram. Um, so, and so I kind of wanted to go, I said, I feel like I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much done with this. Um, I know there's a lot more to, you know, that could be covered with this topic, but I really just kind of wanted to graze the surface and just really kind of give you guys some tips and pointers on how to pick the best option contracts because there's so many out there. Honestly, you guys, with that being said, I feel like this video is going to be a little bit longer, but I feel like there's some good information in here that you can pick out. I'm going to put timestamps in here so you can pick and choose what you need. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment below. I'll try and answer them to the best of my abilities. Also, I am offering zoom, uh, chats and conversations. So if you guys also have, some questions that you want to do something one-on-one -on -one, then just hit me up yeah with that being said you guys i'll catch you guys on the next video please make sure you click that thumbs up button it really helps the channel also if you're not already subscribed click that notification bell so that you get notified anytime i upload a new video for you guys and yeah i'll catch you guys on the next video all right yeah <laughs>